patterns to be to explore all the ideas and that's how i see it um he has been when i was president he was one of the solid voices for reasoning looking at every option when we were there and you need people like that who will not be blinkered and think that they know everything people like sam they would just make sure that every alter welcome back to the flight hit that subscription button buddy and stay updated with everything that's trending in guyana and the diaspora thanks notice taken of great uncle sammy a heinz former top dog in diana now prowling about in the glitzier corners of washington dc but still finding the time to care and write home thank you excellency sam for let's feel good for what we are getting from our oil if that is not compassionate care from one of diana's most loyal sons then nothing else is a man and an ambassador with a heart and if it may be said a mind that works in some ways that are not usually followed by those with patriotic intentions the question has merit is excellency sam heinz still Diana's ambassador to the United States, or has he mutated into Exxon's chief envoy and cheerleader to Diana? The question is both timely and relevant for it has been that kind of year, just made immensely better by the touchy-feely, feel-good era that the venerable Uncle Sam reminded all Guyanese about. In Ambassador Hines' world, it is not so much what Guyanese are missing, it is what they are collecting. Hooray for highlighting the high notes and putting a positive spin on a sticky wicket. Guyanese should go down on their knees and be thankful for small mercies, which are really big ones, according to Excellency Sam. Let's feel good for what we are getting. Who is the we in the getting that Ambassador Hines wrote so richly about. It certainly can't be the ordinary people in Diana, with teachers and public servants standing at the head of the line. Nor can they be the little people of Diana crying out week after week in SN about how what they are getting is not enough to help them live in a healthy standard, maintain a dignified existence. Ambassador Hines can be excused for forgetting that such people exist, since it is known from first-hand experience how numbing the Washington winters can be. The head is the first part of the anatomy that gives up some of its prior robustness, that keenness which allows sober parsing of circumstances in sun blistered Diana. The Americans are having a feast in Diana, and Dianese get to console themselves with Exxon's pittances, while having to make do with famine. Has the passage of time, the distance he is from Diana, eroded Ambassador Hines done something to his mind? The liquids can be strung up on DC, call for great discipline, should there be any dabbling with the spirits. Guyanese are catching hell in the richest town in the world, and the man in Uncle Sam country insists let's all feel good for what we are getting from our oil. Somebody did more than lost touch with reality, that party lost touch with life, no matter how well meaning their position. The children of slavery and indentureship should know better, know the new exploiters who grab all the treasure, while leaving the shavings for the dominant local tribes. Feeling good about that is Rant betrayal. Here is a consideration for Excellency Hines. While he is helping himself to another batch of Maryland crab cakes, there are Dianese left adrift here, who would welcome some crab shells to keep them going. No, Excellency Hines, not a sturdy bed of shells on which to walk, but the brittle sections of the carapace his down home brothers and sisters would use to prop up a meal. Though thousands of miles now separate from his roots, Ambassador Hines is not the kind of man to abandon his people. The politician in him and its now PPP roots may prompt him to so consider, but not the man, Samuel A. Hines, CCH and XYZ. This is dismal. If Sam Hines today, who is next on the We Must All Feel Good bandwagon. On another note, it seems that it is the season of writing for plenipotentiaries and luminaries and other Dianese with a wide swath of the uneven in them. Dr. Hines was not the only ambassador who graced Guyanese with his singular grandness post with good words. One who was here and was the epitome of skulking secrecy broke the veil with some sugary offering over a book. It was a panting, drooling encomium to those with the power to put such folks at a safe distance from Diana. Burnham used to do that with people who needed shelter. From him were other interested parties. Jack Deal may curse Burnham, but he has been one of his best imitators, if not an even better one. Given where Diana is today, and the great interest that it generates, this country's ambassadors should have their hands so full that they don't have a spare moment to start typing on a keyboard about anything. 
That would include how all Dainese should be gratified with what the oil is giving, or whose penmanship is a testimony to greatness. It must be either the foreign air, or the spring water, or they have too much electricity. It could also be that they have no work to do and are at a loss about what to do with themselves. It is the evidence of who is getting and who has it good in Diana. Sir, the former PM and the current ambassador from Ghana to the US, Mr. Hines is, has, has said that the 4.4 billion that would have gotten from oil is already causing a lot of trouble, and to press for more would cause further headache for Guyana. As what, a finance, what did they say? The money is causing Mr. headache. Yes. So as a finance, money the 4.4 billion is already causing a, a lot of problems when it comes to like absorbing it and that kind of thing. And if we press for more, it may cause further trouble. As a finance person, what are your thoughts on this? No. The problem with commenting on something that I've not read is because I didn't see the ambassador saying that. Who, who, which ambassador? Sam oh, Sam. Yes, oh, Sam Hines. Hines. Oh, okay. Um, PM. Now, Sam has a big head like mine, and he, like mine, and he is a very cerebral person. Let me tell you something if you don't know about Sam. Sam is a person who honest to the bone and very thoughtful. And he will think through things like he will he will talk things through in the public domain. So I suspect what he is talking about, I've now read what he said, is about the issue of the Dutch disease. I think that's what he was probably aiming to deal with, and which is a big concern of this government too. A big concern, the Dutch disease is a concern. So, so I, but, but when he speaks, you, you, you must see this as an honest kind of public discourse allowing his thought patterns to be to explore all the ideas and that's how i see it um he has been when i was president he was one of the solid voices for reasoning looking at every option when we were there and you need people like that who will not be blinkered and think that they know everything people like Sam, they would just make sure that every alternative is at the table. So I, I have great respect for his opinion, etc. I don't know the context in which he made those remarks, but, but clearly, so far, the oil resources are just a fraction of our total expenditure. I pointed this out, and you in the Kaichor know, know, know this, the, that it's less than 30% of our total budget. So that is in terms of financing of the budget. So for all of those who think we are awash with large sums of money and we can use it for everything under the sun, there now i think more and more the opposition is realizing after we had to go through what 1.5 percent is and what 10 percent is really and we've got had to go on to almost educate them on this they've realized now that oil money the oil money we have received so far is just a fraction of our financing needs at this point in time and that that will change over the future. But we constantly have to be mindful about absorptive capacity in the country and that the utilization of the resources don't change relative prices. And that we don't need, because there could be a time where you spend so much money in the country that it, 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 affects, it affects the change in the currency, its appreciation, and that will have a negative impact on all of the other non-oil, the other non-oil sectors. So I think that might be what Sam was really getting at. 
but we haven't reached that as yet. We haven't reached that stage, but we are very mindful of it in planning. But he he is free. He's one person who is free to express his views because I know he comes from an honest place, not like some of these crooks that we have to deal with every day. Alliance for Change parliamentarian Cathy Hughes has announced her intention to appeal the dismissal by Chief Justice Roxanne George of her recent application in the court, which, among other things, alleged that Vice President Dr. Barat Jagdio defamed her by calling her a low life. Ms. Hughes has been advised that the decision of the Honorable Chief Justice ought to benefit from a review of a court of appellate jurisdiction and has consequently instructed her attorneys to appeal the decision. Details of the appeal filed will be shared with the media. The AFC said in a statement today. On Monday, the Chief Justice had dismissed the case for being wholly misconstrued and lacking merit. During the proceedings, Attorney General Anil Nanlaw, SC, had argued among other things that when the Vice President made reference to Hughes and no life behavior during a press conference on November 23, 2023, there was no evidence of discrimination in his utterance. The Attorney General argued that there is absolutely no evidence of discrimination in the Vice President's utterance, as he was speaking only of Mrs. Hughes, and that where discrimination is alleged, on the prescribed ground of race or gender, an inference of discrimination cannot be drawn, unless there is a true comparator, that is, where the circumstances are equal and the only difference is that of race or gender. In this case, not only was there no comparator, there was no true comparator. The comment was in reference to the applicant and the applicant alone. A statement from the Ministry of Legal Affairs said, the High Court further ruled that there was no evidence Jagdeo's reference to Hughes was by way of an official statement of the government, as was alleged in the case, nor was the non-establishment of the Human Rights Commission deemed a constitutional breach. The court further stated that Mrs. Hughes provided no evidence explaining why she failed to approach the Women and Gender Equality Commission, which is an operational constitutional body whose functions include initiating investigations into alleged violations of women's rights and monitoring compliance with with international instruments. The court therefore held that Mrs. Hughes' claim was wholly misconstrued and without merit. The court indicated that a full written judgment would later be made available. Additionally, the fact that opposition leader Aubrey Norton was included as a respondent in the case by Hughes was commented on by the High Court. According to the Chief Justice, who also dismissed the claim against the opposition leader, it is more than passing strange that the applicant would sue her parliamentary opposition colleague, the leader of the opposition. The state was represented by Nan Law, Deputy Solicitor General Shishana Law and State Counsel Sabira Ali Hyderal, Laurel Dundas and Pierre Squires, while Hughes was represented by her husband and attorney at law Nigel Hughes and Kiswana Jefford. The case has its genesis in statements made by Jack Dio during a November 2023 press conference, when he had condemned comments made by Hughes at a public meeting in Linden, where she claimed that as president, Jack Dio had offered Venezuela a maritime channel to Venezuela. Earlier this month, it had been reported that Cathy Hughes was forced to admit in the High Court that she falsely claimed Jack Dio, as president, had offered a channel to Venezuela to settle the border controversy. She had acknowledged that the channel issue with Venezuela had been brought up before Jagdeo's government involvement. She had also admitted in court that Jagdeo had no role in government in 1989 and that Dr. Barton Scotland, not Jagdeo, initially raised the channel issue. Hughes had also admitted that her only basis for the claim was a TikTok video, which she did not have and could not submit to the court as evidence. As a matter of fact, Jagdeo in October 2015 had his opposition leader, while responding to questions from the media on the border controversy had explained that in the past, before the PPP, C took office in 1992, several options were discussed as part of reaching a negotiated settlement with Venezuela to resolve the border controversy. On the evening of October 2, 2024, at 1827 HRS, a fire broke out at the Criminal Investigation Department compound, Eve Leary, Georgetown. The fire response team, consisting of water tender number 118, water tender number 95, water carrier number 18, and HP number 2, supported by ambulance number 16, was immediately dispatched to the location. The first unit arrived on the scene at 1833 HRS and the first jet went into action at 1834 HRS. A total of 12 firefighters, led by Section Leader King and supported by leading firemen Roberts and Edwards, responded to the incident and swiftly extinguished the fire. 
The affected building was a single-story concrete structure used as a storage facility, formerly known as the Identification Room. The structure is owned by the government of Guyana. Fortunately, no one was left homeless and no injuries were reported. However, the building sustained significant damage and its contents were destroyed. The cause of the fire is currently under investigation. Police personnel were instrumental in the initial firefighting efforts, using 6 kilograms and 4 kilograms dry powder extinguishers along with buckets of sand to suppress the fire before the firefighters arrived. The fire crew used one jet from water tender number 118 to fully extinguish the blaze. Further updates will be provided as the investigation continues. Jack Dio during his weekly press engagement was responding to a question from Kaitor News when he revealed that big companies are now applying for their employees to become naturalized citizens in Guyana, claiming to have been in the country for five years. Subsequent to their naturalization, foreigners would be able to enjoy benefits provided for Guyanese under the 2021 local content act. The legislation seeks to ensure Guyanese gain employment in the sector. It also outlines a number of services that must be provided by Guyanese to the oil companies, as well as their subcontractors. The vice president said, it's our intention to close the loopholes that some foreign companies are utilizing. It's our intention because some of them get high paying jobs so the management they have higher paying jobs for the foreigners but over time they have to change the management so a lot of the big companies. And we will start exposing them. They are trying to get their foreign staff claiming that they lived here for five years and to get them Guyanese nationality. Jack Dio said government is carefully monitoring that situation. He also alerted the companies that they would not succeed in any such effort. He made it clear, we are watching that carefully so I hope if some of them applying for it, I see some of the big companies applying for that, they are not going to succeed. They have to give our people more opportunities and better paying jobs too. Some of these companies will do everything. Jack Dio was keen to note that government will be moving to strengthen the legislation and expand opportunities available for Guyanese in the sector. The VP's comments come on the heels of a recent commentary by attorney at law and chartered accountant. Christopher Ram who argued that the rapid development of the petroleum sector was preventing Guyanese from enjoying the real benefits of local content. Part of our problem is that we have tried to move too fast. We have moved from 0 to 100 in a couple of years. We don't have the capacity so we can't have real local content. Ram pointed out that the Local Content Act sets out 40 areas for Guyanese to benefit from. He said this was a mere fraction given that there are about 300 to 500 types of expenditure incurred by the oil companies and subcontractors. He said, only for 40 and some of them they range from 100% like for cleaners which is no big deal. Guyanese are good cleaners apparently but we can't do the higher things. With Guyanese being paid to do minor jobs, receiving mega salaries, the lawyer noted that the respective percentages for the 40 areas should have been changed within a year. On the other hand, he said, the schedule to the Local Content Act has remained unchanged. We have not taken account of experience and how it has worked compared with what we thought it should be. When asked to comment on this state of affairs, Jack Dio said the local content law was delivering major benefits to Guyanese. In fact, he pointed out that by the end of 2024, some US $700 and would be invested in Guyanese businesses. Jack Dio was keen to note that in the absence of this legislation, the country would have merely secured just about US $50 and instead. To this end, he said, so first of all we should hail this act as the biggest impact. We don't even talk much about our success but this act in itself is a great success. This act by the end of this year will drive US $700 and of business to our local companies. That's not a small sum of money dot 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 that is major, major change and we intend to create even more room for our people provided they develop the capacity. Notably, he did not address the rapid pace at which the sector is being developed but noted that a revision of the local content act is ongoing. Amid growing concerns as to what specific projects oil funds are used to finance, the government on Thursday announced that it has transferred $62.30 be more from the Natural Resources Fund bringing its total withdrawal to date for the year to $239.17 be. Finance Minister Dr. Ashley Singh. Finance Minister Dr. Ashley Singh. In a statement Thursday evening, the Ministry of Finance said pursuant to the Natural Resource Fund Act 2021, as amended by the Fiscal Enactments Act 2024, parliamentary approval has been granted for USON billion five hundred eighty six million one hundred fifty thousand three hundred thirty one dollars to be withdrawn from the NRF in 2024. According to the Ministry, in accordance with this approval, the government of Guyana has made its fourth transfer 
funds for, for 2024, totaling US $300 million from the NIF on October 1, 2024, to the consolidated fund. This transfer brings the accumulated withdrawals to date in 2024 to USOM $15 billion within the total of USOM $58 billion approved to be withdrawn in 2024. Lack of transparency. Concerns have been raised about the management of the, of the NRF and only recently chairman of the Public Accounts Committee of the National Assembly. Jermaine Feeder called for transparency in the use of Guyana's oil money, citing the need for possible amendments to the Natural Resource Fund Act. Section 16.2 of the NRF NIF Act states that all withdrawals from the fund shall be deposited into the consolidated fund and shall be used only to finance national development priorities including any initiative aimed at realizing an inclusive green economy and essential projects that are directly related to ameliorating the effect of a major natural disaster. To date, government has budgeted approximately US dollars and 60 cents B in oil money through 2022 to 2024. The revenues earned from oil are transferred to the consolidated fund blurring tracks of expenditure. Government has not identified the national development priorities being funded by the revenue from oil. This is particularly concerning as the legislation features no penalties for misuse of the funds. Figure had however pointed to the need for transparency in the use of resources from the sector, urging that the NRF Act is clear on how the funds should be spent. Dot, 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 we require more specifics because the act is very clear with regards to how those funds should be spent and if you just lump some into the consolidated fund we need to know definitely of those funds that were transferred into the consolidated fund that are they being used for the specific purposes with regards to what the act speaks to. The parliamentarian said the NIF act may require amendments to justify transfers to the consolidated fund for spending across the board rather than for specific purposes outlined in the act. These amendments, according to him, are crucial to ensure there is absolute conformity with the legal requirements. He said, given how it is being transferred and unknown of how it is being utilized, it therefore requires some additional amendments to give greater clarity on the direction of how these funds should be directed and used. Figueroa was adamant that the public must be able to know what portion of the fund was used for a specific project. This can be done, according to him, through the budget documents, to certify that the funds are utilized according to the Act. Furthermore, he also shared the view that the oil money should be subjected to a separate audit. Figueroa explained, this is the most important sector and therefore a lot of attention should be directed specifically to these funds. We want to ensure that the country doesn't suffer from the Dutch disease and therefore, these funds should be dispersed in a manner that is very responsible and therefore special attention should be directed specifically to that sector to manage the fund. With little transparency regarding the use of Diana's oil well, international financial analysts worry that the revenue may not be used to develop the country and improve the lives of its poor citizens. For instance, Director of Financial Analysis at the Institute for Energy Economics and Financial Analysis, Tom Sanzillo had pointed out that the government has not been prioritizing saving the funds generated from the industry like Norway but has instead embarked on a massive infrastructural and energy development scheme which may very well benefit its partner, ExxonMobil more than the citizens in the country. Meanwhile, the government previously said that money from the oil account is transferred directly to the consolidated fund which blends the various revenue streams. This means that the government is therefore unable to see what specific projects were funded by those earnings. Interest Back in July this year, this newspaper reported that the Natural Resource Fund in 2023 generated an interest of US$86.80, a substantial increase when compared with the returns earned in 2022. This information is contained in the 2023 NIF annual report tabled in the National Assembly by the Senior Minister in the Office of the President with Responsibility for Finance and the Public Service, Dr. Ashni Singh. According to the documents seen by this newspaper, net return generated by the fund totaled $18,105.25 million for the year 2023, a substantial increase of 396% over the previous year's level on account of higher interest rates on overnight deposits during 2023. An annual portfolio return of 4 0.824% was achieved by the fund in 2023 compared with 1.581% in 2022. The 2023 NIF annual report states that Brent crude oil prices fell by 10.32% during 2023 moving from US$85.91 per barrel at the start of the year to US$77.04 per barrel as at the end of December 2023. Further, total barrels of oil produced by Guyana's three floating production storage and offloading vessels totaled 100 
142 million barrels during 2023 in comparison with 101.41 million barrels for 2022. Notably, as at December 31, 2023, the fund accounted for inflows of U.S. zone dollars and 60 cents B during the reporting period, and represented an increase of 13.90% when compared with the inflows of U.S. zone dollars and 40 cents B for 2022. These inflows were deposited into the Natural Resource Fund account held at the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. With the exception of two profit oil payments for two lifts which occurred in December 2023, totaling U.S. zone $148.91 million. These payments were received in January and February 2024. Meanwhile, the report outlines the outflows in the form of withdrawals from the fund total U.S. zone $1,002.13 million in 2023, which reflected an increase of 64.92% over the previous year's level of U.S. $607.65 million. On September 24, 2024, during an outreach held by the Minister of Housing and Water, Mr. Colin Crowe, and the Central Housing and Planning Authority at La Bonne Intention Housing Scheme, residents reported the theft of streetlights from the LBI Young Professional Housing Scheme, East Coast Demerara. The matter was brought to the attention of the police where a report was made. On September 26, 2024, following an investigation and intelligence received, police arrested Shamo Jones, a 34-year-old electrician from Placen squatting area, East Coast Demerara. He admitted to stealing the street lights and installing them in various areas. The police managed to recover 24 stolen street lights, and Jones was taken into custody. On September 27, 2024, Jones was charged with the offense of simple larceny, contrary to Section 164 of the Criminal Law Act, Chapter 801. <laughs> You know, I gotta buy a guest house. Let this bitch know I just live fucking here. Since me and court done, I rent a fucking place. This way it's got for fucking do. You are come for fucking cause and don't know the business good. Well, I tell you it since you don't fucking know. I got a fucking place where you're renting. I just rent a fucking place since me and court done. I used to live home with court. I used to live home with court for four fucking years and when me he done I go and I went for my own me go back by my mother I don't sleep by my mother I don't live by my mother you just live by your fucking mother Wait till she does them making up things. She talking too loud for someone who live him. Exactly. This girl living by your mother. Even if I living in a fucking apartment. Not hello. A lot of people in Guyana don't have a, a place to the own. Right now I billing me place to be own. I billing me own place right now. I billing. But you living by your mother. Oh, you could be a regular girl and living by your mother. You live with your mother in your mother place. That is not your place. How she talking about this big BTO, big BTO, big BTO? You, you got nothing more for tell me? She ain't got nothing more for tell me, but big bit ah, she yelling is big BTO, big BTO, big BTO, big BTO, young at the bed, young at this, young at the, young at the third, young at the fourth. Me got nothing. You got every fucking thing, but still living by your fucking mother. Eh? At least I don't live by my mother. Me mother is smoke coke and I never live with she. I never live with her. I've never lived with my mother. I don't gotta go by me mother place to pop set myself on fucking Facebook. Hear them in the background telling she and she telling me don't like punch you know but them in the background telling she things because they're watching me live i continue watching it fucking live i said continue watching it Germs. She's frightened for come off the live right now. She's scared. Cause she don't want to tell you how I know. 
She ain't want to tell you how I fuck you. No, she's scared to come out of the life right now. She ain't coming out of no time soon for it. <laughs> Yo, she knows she able. She knows she fucking able. Air, air, right now the old Franco for commercial, and Franco for fucking commercial. Hello, come out the fucking life if you don't talk and stop talking about big bitty and little bitty and all them fucking hole. You stinking mother scum. Del Shani is a stink dog. Come out the fucking life you don't die and there. Oh, oh, like you have a time now. Fucking the I build this life, come me life got past you. Me ain't gonna put no life with three point nothing. Yes. When she fucking come up, then I gonna come on. germs like them this way just do them spit pump fucking them she warm with white spray the oil the oil with white spray oh god which men them should talking about if you get up you fuck it Hello, good boy, that a profile. When you see me, you spit pump fucking me. I give you all the fucking permission for spit pump me when you see me. Oh, God. Let what them fucking on Kogan, big a top smile of big arms, spit pump me. Right now she freak me right now. Don't go cause she with lies. When she don't tell far to fucking lies for me. Far to lies. She don't she don't talk about me and don't want me to come and talk about her. Well look sorry. Hey. She said me at a fucking bed. I rent in a fucking place. With every fucking thing living comfortable. She she don't even dare by me for nobody fuck I's dead doing during the day. This girl don't even know how I live. She living by some mother pampers that you should sell by mother, you know. The life we should do it is in Shamora house, not by she. You say, should they go in? It's by Shamora, should they? Why lose? I didn't know me she was in a fucking war that 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 I got for fucking lose. I want she come out before fuck when she done talk. She just she, she story just stick. She records stick right now. They'll shine your fucking records. Thick. Come out the fucking life like talk your whole business now, no man. You don't want to talk your business. You don't want to talk about your fox. Are you gonna talk about your fox tonight? How long I move up from courthouse? But two weeks, kind into three weeks. I don't rent a fucking place. I always don't know nothing about me. Me ain't gonna run back by me mother. Me ain't gonna go in me mother house of pampas. Let me self. I am living by your mother. Oh God. No, she got to oh, she got to big BT. She got to big this, big doll, thirty foot. No, you got to me. You want to see a mother house? Your mother is a big woman. She's supposed to have a house. My mother have a house, my father have a fucking house. Both parents have a house as they should. When you reach certain age, you're supposed to have your own house. Look. Look. 
She more a place, you know. She more a place. She pampers it. She's like, hello, yeah. Share the life. 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 You know, land she just buy. All of a sudden she buy a land. All of a sudden now she come for life and say she buy a land. Well, look story. Eh? Let's show with the land people. She don't have a beautiful oh my sugar and mother. Of course, when I did and gone or I tore me back, me daughter have a fucking place. Me children them have a fucking place. This is why the man will fuck you and make the fucking child disown you and the fucking child. Your daughter is not fucking me. Look at that room. No, no, no. come in and share the fucking life, na man. Let her know this is not a fucking guest. So this is a rent. This is a monthly fucking rent. It's me and court. Me and court used to live together for years. And when me eat done, I gonna rent a fucking place because I wanna be comfortable. I got my own place. I got my own place. Everybody's pay rent. Who don't pay rent? How much people in Guyana don't pay fucking rent? I don't live by my mother. I just pay a rent. I said I pay a rent. Yes. I share the life. Share the life. If I tell you, me try to come for table at night. She not get far out. She not. I don't know when I fuck her mind. She a make she. The ma fuck she and never want sign. Never sign for the child. Don't want the child left just scunt right there. The ma fuck she left just scunt. Me and me fucking me, me husband and make her back. They got no make her back with me. They got no make her back with me. None. Are you the fucking mother? You're not the mother. She with this chair and this chair and this fucking chair and chair and chair and chair and chair. You record stick, bitch. You record stick. The chair is me own. The chair and the whole place is me own. Everything is me own. Everything is me own. The whole land is me own. The land is me own. The place is me own. The building is me own. It's not my mother own. It's not my mother own. So don't hype up with your mother things, them girl. Here, here is a top girl. Whoever tells you she's not a top girl. Is who the tell this girl she's not a fucking top girl? It's broke fucking been up fucking whore. Who foot back with cap harder than me on a big, big, big. You look like you's run fucking track and feel. I a track and feel fucking whores. Are you fucking calf bigger than me fucking Bobby? This one living next to the this one living too fucking we call it. What the fuck you place there, man? Up Semtro there. Um Who the fucking place name by? She there by your fucking mother. And Gainan. You Gainan and Gainan a fucking guy. Not about me that today. AC sleeping. It's AC me that today sleeping. Middle road, you hear? Two middle road, you fucking living by your mother house, by your mother place, by your mother property. And they're hyping up like she's somebody. But she's nobody. Every two weeks, you gotta jump on a plane and go to fucking Bahamas to strip. And come back home with 900 fucking US dollars after you don't spend five, six fucking months. Will you could tell me? Will you could really tell me? She she sit down for me all my silicone them pop because she's all cogon. She foot back. She foot back is to me fucking breast. Look, this alone is she fucking foot back. This alone. Look, take this here. Is she one is she foot back? Are you talking about me? Hello, you yeah, share the life. Are you ready for fucking she tonight? Me and she tonight. Show me a fucking 
Hot, she hot. Look now, she hot. You can see the sweating. She just sweating. Look, me armpit so so so. You can see the sweat up on her face. Sweaty, sweaty, sweaty. And she the AC. Bitch, me ain't got the me ain't sweat out like the me ain't sweat out like the car when they rent a fucking place. The place come with AC. Ah, she talking about his views with 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 this some views with do and lies and like. Who you care about I'm using? Up to now, me start abusing you yet, y'all. Up to now, me jump out for fucking you. Up to now, up to now. I don't sit on any of you tell, but far the fucking lies on me. Far the lies that you don't know nothing about me or. You said smoke cigarette and never put a cigarette in my mouth in me all entire life. Never, 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 never. Smoke a cigarette in me life. There's one lie you don't talk. You say about. Are 300,000 for court mother is not 300,000, 600,000. She never got it back. Cause if I can't get it from she, I can get it from fucking. If I can't get it from he, I can get it from she. You say me got a bed, but I sleep on a bed every fucking night. Me want to go back and forth with she for sure. I can show she when I come up on me life. I can show she with me that this fucking sleep. Cause horses is why I'm in your fucking business. A natural way to stay ready, baby. Because I'm ready for you, Mr. C. The ultimate male supplement, men's total wellness formula, packed with essential nutrients for men's health. She'll call you, Mr. C. Because I put in a man in the trunk is a problem. But my shamanic time, everybody, they ain't trunk, and if they drink your rum, two people, they hang out the foot, if they're going to walk, the man throw you in a trunk and you're driving going. But I ain't here to carry the man that he has to in the trunk. There's a problem. Eh? Are you relaxing yourself, yeah? yeah. You lash me in me head. Why right, you say? Sit down next to my partner. It's strong for your scunt. I thought me was had tendered a resignation. Eh? From party and politics. But apparently that's not the case. May is, May is on leave and receiving pay. Troy Fraser, you wonder why May is smiling? May is still on the job, on leave and receiving pay. Now May pay alone as a PS. So May running the ministry from home. Right? <laughs> Um, the thing that says is a snitch visa. It is called a snitch visa. It usually means indictments are being pursued. And here this is a post from social media. The S, non-immigrant classification, is generally available to aliens who would otherwise be inadmissible to or deported from the United States. For example due to criminal convictions or certain problems with immigration status. The statute authorizes the Secretary of Homeland Security to waive the grounds of inadmissibility. The program is particularly useful for witnesses